welcome back to part two on creating a fabric book, uh, journal cover. Uh, so we've got all the outside done. Um, now we're going to move inside and I'll just show you how I uh, finish off the inside. I, <clears throat> I've already got my signature cut and kind of organized. So what I'd like to do is put that in here so that I'm sure that I've got enough of the fabric to cover and then I just take a pencil and a ruler and I just really lightly draw a line down where I know I want to sew my signature in because I don't like to um, sew mine without a, a guideline um, because I, I'm funny, I like to make sure my signature does line up. So that's one thing I've started doing is draw, drawing a little line because it's going to get covered up once you sew that signature in. It's going to cover that up anyways. Um, so I do that first and then I come back <clears throat> and just measure the width and the height just like you would in, a, in your paper journal um, on where you want to cut your um, cardstock because I always line mine, um, if it's not fabric lined then I cut, line it with an um, image that's printed out onto cardstock and I've done that ahead of time um, just to save a bit of time for us. This um, is one of the images from the kit, isn't it pretty? And so I've I put that onto cardstock because I like it to be a little bit sturdier. Um, and then I've went ahead and stitched in these are, are the pockets from the kit, so I've stitched those in ahead of time. And then I'm getting very close to um, being able to glue those in. And once they've glued in, I let them dry for a few minutes, and then I'll start sewing in my signature. But I did want to say, um, I've had a couple of questions, and I, <clears throat> well, in the comments um, after the first tutorial, there was, there's been a couple of things brought up, so I wanted to try to address those. Um, another thing I have forgot to tell you guys yesterday, um, this journal, the front cover, because you've added the the cart, you know, the images is pretty sturdy, but if you're a person that wants this to be a little bit sturdier than than it is with just the fabric, you can also in between your um, muslin and the batting layer, you can put a layer of cardstock and that'll make it a little bit sturdier and there's another product uh, Gosh, somebody mentioned it in a video the other day. I'll have to try to find it. Um, and I've not tried it, but there's another thing on the market that they said they use, and it's really sturdy between the layers. Uh, if I find that, guys, I'll come back and edit it into the description box. Um, but that's what I can what I do if I if I, you know if I do want it to be sturdier, just put some cardstock between the layer and that will um, solve that problem. Um, another question was if you didn't have batting, what else could you use? I, I don't know. Um, you know, you would just have to try to play around um, with different fabrics because when I first started, um, I didn't know if I was going to like working with fabric because my only other experience was when I was really young. My dad put me into sewing classes. I was like nine, and I hated it. So when I started into the journal making, I didn't want to buy a lot of items because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it. So the very first um, fabric ones I did was I had just gotten some fabric from the um, thrift store, and I stitched the fabric to cardstock while I quickly learned I did not like the way that that felt and I will say I found it really f hard to stitch to 
um, cardstock because the fabric kept sliding around. So I wouldn't recommend that either because, um, but just do what you have to do when you're starting out to see if you're going to even like it. If you don't, you don't want to have spent a lot of money on it. So um, I can't think of anything else that was brought up, but I did want to say that if you want to make that more stable, just put some cardstock in between there until <laughs> until I can find out what that product was somebody mentioned. Um, so anyways, we know where we're going to sew in the signature, so we've got a, a little line there, so that way I can just line these up and get those glued in. I'm going to do that while we um, carry on with getting the signature ready um, because I know a lot of people were looking forward to this part too so I wanted to get this up as quick as I could for you guys. <clears throat> I, in, in hindsight, and this is, shows my inexperience for tutorials, I should have waited to upload part one until I had the whole project done, but you learn. Now I know next time if I do another one that's going to run into a couple of parts, I'll leave it so that I can do everything in one go. So I apologize for the wait, guys. It's I've just had, um, I've got a couple of custom orders I'm trying to get finished off, and uh, I'm trying to work this in between those because those have to take priority. I do love these um, glues. They are amazing. Alright, I'm going to just set this to the side and I'll just go ahead and show you guys how I um, prepare my signatures. Okay, I've got I've got it all cut out. You guys, you know, you, there's tutorials out there for getting gathering things up. Somebody did ask me, how do I decide what I'm going to put in there? Um, I don't think there's a formula for it. I mean, there's certain things I try to remember to include some sort of pocket, like an envelope or a glassine bag, and then some journals I'll put in a. Um, a doily. I don't always do that. I think it kind of depends. This one I did. I did put one in here. I've got some book pages that I think coordinate nicely with this. Um, there's a doily. It just depends on the particular journal and I'm really sorry if I can't guide you more on that. Um, I think it's kind of like with the collaging. It's a personal thing that you, you just kind of work through on your own. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I can't be of more help on that. I think it's just some things come from experience, trial and error. So, um, oh, okay, sorry, I'm trying not to bang this um, setup here, but I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so I tend to when I first get started, I tend to keep my signature clip together, um, and I like to, um, I use a five hole pamphlet stitch now. I, when I started out, I did three, and I would advise the three hole is probably the best place to start with sewing in because it's, you know, you you got to get comfortable with it, and it's the easiest one. Although the five hole is not particularly difficult, but um, I would recommend you start out with a three hole. Um, but for this journal, it's going to be five. So um, these are essential. The ruler um, that just makes your life so much easier. I didn't have this when I first started, so I'd have to take a ruler and try to mark out and work it out, but um, I definitely think this is an essential part of journal making. So I I know I always, always sew mine uh, at the center one and a half and three 
is where I do my five because anything that's small I, I want to make sure that it's secured in there and that seems to work out really well for me but everybody's different you know so I just do a, a little marking with a pencil if it's on a, a dark print and you're struggling take an ink um, and do a tiny hole because once you pump punch the hole through you're not going to see it anyways um, I've got this is from Stampin Up it's just a piece of uh, it's like a dense foam I'm sure you can pick up something similar I like these a lot of people I've seen use really thick yellow pages or catalogs I only have a thick yellow pages um, or a thick catalog to use I wish I did that would be um, I know Nick the, the booksmith um, uses that and it, it looks like it would be a lot easier because it's going to hold it um, whereas I've got to what I do is I, I kind of do it this way that way I know I'm going to get it center on that um, and it doesn't always work out that way sometimes when you puncture that hole through it'll slip a bit but fingers crossed today since I'm doing a tutorial I'm hoping it's going to come out perfect <laughs> So I punch that first one. I've got two of these, and I leave that one in place so that my paper doesn't slip. Um, it's just something I started doing, and now I just let that stay there so that my papers don't slip over, and it just kind of holds it. And then just come along. And puncture there so let's hope yeah see you can see it was fine until I got up here and that went way off and I don't know why so let me try that one again that was um, I kind of had a feeling this is what would be what would happen the minute I uh, came on camera yeah that's I don't know something there's a reason it's slipping there so okay we got it there that time. Okay, so to keep that from moving, I'm going to get that clamp back on there. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side because I want to show you guys um, if you're uh, kind of funny like I am about my, uh, you know, sewing in my signature. I like it to be straight, and this is what I've come up with. Get yourself some grid paper. And make yourself some little templates. This is for a uh, one inch, two signature, but I'm going to use it on this just because it's a little, it's like a little guideline for me. <clears throat> Mark the top and the bottom on there. That way you'll know. And then line that up with the top and the bottom of your. Um, journal. And then if I were you, I would stick this under there. That way you can get a, a good little marking on when you punch, punch through. So I want to make sure that that's going to be over that line that I drew. And that looks about right to me. So what I do then is just punch through I really hope that's on that line. It's easier if you're doing the two signature, but make yourself up a couple of little templates. Um, I've got them for uh, three signature and then five because that's what I tend to work in. But can you guys see? Luckily, that worked beautifully. I was I was right on that line that I'd drawn, and now come back. <clears throat> and where you see that you've got the little impression, just push that through so that when you start sewing, you can clearly see where to put your needle through, okay? And that will make things so much easier. Now, just keep in mind, you've got this, this um, closure. Be, be careful you don't get that tangled up in your needle and thread. We'll, I'll I'll try to point that out again when we, when we get started. But I always do this 
because you'll be surprised once you start sewing that, if you don't come back and make those really clear, it's very easy not to spot them. And it's just one of those little things, you know, you don't have to do it. You can do it by eye, but I, I'm just really funny about my signatures. I like them to be straight. Okay, so the, anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, just measure it out. Make sure you've got it all centered. And, and grid paper works really well for that because it just it'll make your life easier. So <clears throat> let me show you what I'm using. I've started using this. Um, I haven't been able to find any upholstery thread in the UK <laughs> yet. Um, so that's on my wish list um, because I would rather be sewing with that. But this is the thickest I could find and it's a really nice um, strong. You could probably use, I could probably be using my Irish linen thread but I don't want to, to waste it on that. I'm, it's very precious to me. So I've started using this over the waxed thread that you can get at the stores because I've started out with, um, show you. I started out with the wax thread from Hobby Lobby. And I think if you're just getting started, I would recommend this. And the reason why, it's very heavily waxed and it won't slip through the hole as much as, as using something like this. And you're going to find out, if, if you're new to this, that that's frustrating because you're sewing and you think, oh crap, I've just gone through the hole again. Um, so this is... I would recommend if you're just starting to sew, get some of the um, the waxed thread from uh, a store. Like I said, I know I purchased mine at Hobby Lobby, but now I like this better, and there's a couple of reasons why. When you are at the center of your signature, sometimes I like to add like a a couple of buttons or maybe some of the little uh, die cuts. And this, they dangle more. The um, wax thread just kind of hangs there. It's, it's not very nice. But the biggest reason I've switched to this is I can use a slightly smaller needle. And um, that way you don't have, have to have such a large hole in your papers. It just looks nicer. Um, so thinking about that. Okay, so let's get going. Because um, I, I really got, I got to get on. Okay, so we've got our hole there, got our holes here, so start with your center, okay? Come through, and with your thumb, take that end to try to keep that from coming, coming through. That's how I do it, and then I come through that, your journal, and pull that snug, but make sure you you've got a hold of your end otherwise it's going to come through okay so I got that pretty snug there gosh I hope this is going to work guys um, hang on I gotta get rid of my glasses it's funny because um, I need <coughs> glasses for for distance and so I always have to pull them off when I start getting up and doing this kind of stuff. Um, hang on, I'm gonna have to move my chair. I gotta stand up. I stand up when I craft. Um, my um, desk. I I might try to. I might show you guys my craft room one day if I get really really brave. Um, my workstations are all at pub height. Pub. <laughs> yeah, like I need a drink. Um, they're at pub height because um, I, I like to stand when I'm um, when I'm crafting. Because if you sit all day, it's bad for your back. So I'm trying to figure out how I can make a um, 
how I can make a exercise workout for crafters so that I can make my millions selling that but I haven't quite figured out how you can do like an aerobic workout and sewing in a um, signature. When I get that video done, made, I'll let you guys know. All right, so did I tell, okay, sorry, I'm yapping away. All right, so you go through the middle one, then come through the second hole. It won't matter which, which direction you go, but when you're starting out, just follow me. Go through the second hole, go into the top. You've pulled that through, now, Go through the third one, and then find your hole on the journal, because we want that to be <clears throat> completely straight. And then pull it through, snug everything up. you got to constantly be making sure that that's nice and snug. Okay? So do you see? You have went through one, you came up through two, you went back down through three. Okay? Now... Keeping the end of that thread, turn your journal over, and now this is where it starts getting tricky because you got to go back through this hole, but do not pierce that thread. Um, and sometimes I will give a little bit of slack in the journal just so that I can see, because you don't want to pierce the thread. It is a nightmare if you do that, and it's not easy to, to avoid. Um, there's been a couple of times I've done it and really the only thing you can do is cut that back out and start all over because there's no salvaging it. Yeah, sorry, I'm really struggling with seeing here. come through there. I don't know why I'm not getting it back through. Ah, here we go. It's come through now. Wow. It's very, um, okay. Now snug that up. Make sure still got that in place. Okay. So we went down through here, back through the second hole, up through here, went over, down, back up, now we're back, we're not going to go back through the center, we're going to jump now down to here. And if, if you guys, really, the best thing on this I would suggest is <clears throat> do a search on YouTube for a five hole pamphlet stitch because there's some ladies on there that really can show it much better than I am. Um, I'm just going through the process just purely. Um, so, you, so you know what I'm doing, but they've got great filming equipment so you can see better and stop, you know, you can stop and start it where, where you need. So I'm going now back through, I went through the, I jumped from here down to this one. So we've come through, now we're going to go through the last hole there. And sorry, I'm going to have to move this. I still cannot see from here. Yeah, those things, they slip sometimes when you're moving around. All your papers will slip and it makes it so difficult to come back. All right, <coughs> so I've got it through there. Now, holding that in place, let's snug everything up. The other thing I do is just flip it over, check along here. I can see that's loose, so I'm going to have to make sure something got loose there. So let's tighten all this up. Yeah, I'm, I'm really funny about that. I, I like my signatures to be sewn in really tight. Because if you don't, the papers, it's just going to flop around, and that's not nice. That's not the way it should be. Um, okay, so look again. Everything's that's still a little bit loose up there. I'm not too sure. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little bit 
just like. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. That's all tight. Now I'm going to come back through this hole. We've just got to get through this one and one more, and then we are done. Just be really careful that you do not pierce that thread when you're coming through those. And like I said, do, do look on YouTube for a, a real proper video on um, your three and five hole pamphlet stitch because um, they there's some good tutorials. Alright, so we've come through now. We're just going to go back through this one. Now when you come through this one, you see how the thread is on that side? This time you want to make sure the needle comes up on this side of it. That way you can tie it off. Sorry, I'm just going to have to move this over here so I can see, guys. There we go. I got it. Do you see? Let me make sure you guys can see that. Can you see I've got the needle coming up on the other side there? And the reason for that is that way you can tie this off. Um, <clears throat> Alright, and then you just do um, the left string over and then the right string, which feels really backwards. <laughs> and then snug that off and then You know what, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to snip those off there. Okay, guys. That is sewn in. I'll probably come back later and add a, a, a couple of little butterflies to that. But I'll give you, you can see, you can see there, we've got it sewn in. And... We've got, um, let me clamp that together for a minute so you can, and this is our inside front cover, and that's the inside back cover, and now all I've got to do is um, embellish this, and I don't know if I get time, I might have a part three, but we, I'm going to say you know, this is the end of part two. If I've got time, I'll come back and, and let you guys see me go through it and start to embellish it. But I don't know if, if how long it would be before I could get that done. So I'm not going to make any promises on a, par, on a part three, guys. Um, and I am going to have to cut this, um, this off. It's too long. So I will be altering that but that's it guys that's that's how I do it um, the other variation on it and I didn't do it in this and it's probably going to come down the road is um, if you want a really nice finished for this style journal which I said is rustic chic I'm not bothered I like it to be kind of you know imperfect but if if you're the kind of person that wants this to be nicely finished off I'm going to try to do a tutorial on that down the road um, and I'll show you how we can do the corners so that everything is going to be really nicely finished. So anyways, I hope that's helped you guys and I appreciate you so much for watching and really thank you for the, uh, the comments. It's nice for you to interact with you guys and um, you know, hear your thoughts on things, and I had some really great tips off of some people yesterday, so thank you so much for those. You guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye!